I walked in and I met this young man and he licked my hand, so I licked his. And he said, ew, and I said, well, I thought you liked it. You licked my hand, so let's start again. I'll give you my hand and you go ahead and, and just shake it this time. And he licked it and I licked his. And he said, ew, and I said, well, we're going to do this all day. So we started right off the bat, but then I said, okay, I tell you what, I'm going to come in the door again and I'm going to look right in your eyes and I'm going to tell you what I think about you. And it just went like that, one moment after another. Mm. It unfolded and unfolded. And my total intention the entire time was to get eye contact, to get his interest. Mm -hmm. get, I was manipulating mm -hmm. okay. him. Mm -hmm. uh, can we go back to... Uh, yes, Jeff, go. When you first walked, how well did you know this boy before you licked his hand? I had just met him. Because he could have been digging somewhere, I and you just got all kinds of chocolate sorry. chips. This is a strange kid, man. I can lick it, but I need the one of them alcohol the pads. I'm on alcohol. I'm on alcohol swab it first. Hold and, uh, on, pimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take another quick break. When we come back, Corey Holcomb is in the building. Oh, put that. Uncle Bobby, it's about to turn up another notch. We're talking about manipulation in relationships and mass media and government and whatever manipulation is ubiquitous how do we deal with it how do we move forward the questions are being asked hopefully answers are coming forth we'll be back at 2.2 zoe williams oh i've manufactured controversies uh done stunts planted fake stories hi i'm tracy oppenheimer for reason tv i'm here with ryan holiday author of the new book trust me i'm lying confessions of a media manipulator He's also been a media strategist for clients like Tucker Max, and he is the current director of marketing for American Apparel. Ryan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. In your book, one of your main focal points is that blogs are really dictating what's news right now and feeding the top news dogs instead of the other way around. Why, why do you think this is? The online cycle drives the offline cycle, and the reason for that is, is where do, if you're a media producer, you're a radio producer, you're a, a television show host, you're a researcher, where are you finding out the things that you're going to talk about in your nightly or daily broadcast. You're not out, like, pounding the pavement, like, sitting in some bar, like, you know, listening for gossip. You're on the Internet like everyone else. The mainstream media outlets have sort of taken on the role of popularizers. So they see what's being talked about on the Internet, and then they say, hey, we've got a bigger audience. We're going to take this thing, and we're really going to blow it up. If this is what everyone's talking about, that's what we need to bring to our users. And so what happens is that things start on the internet for whatever reason and then the next thing you know they're on CNN. And you make the claim that because blogs have an infinite amount of space to fill, you know, the bar lowers for what the, the quality of their content. But because a lot of the mainstream news outlets have a lot of their content coming from online as well, isn't the bar lowered across the board? Absolutely. I mean, we, we've always sort of joked about how having to fill a 24-7 cycle makes cable news just talk about total bullshit. Well, what if it was a infinite cycle and yet like Fox News can throw up a blog post and depending on the response to that Wow side, so not even the news can I mean, be trusted I that young lady before I just don't remember my name I was trying to speaking to Mike Corey <laughs> What is your name? My name is Lynette Louise. Thank you Lynette for asking. Louise. And we call her the Brain Broad. That's right. I met her before. I know her. I, remember. She, she did the show before. Didn't she didn't broke down. You didn't say welcome back. Hey, well, you know what? It ain't broke down, Bobby. Settle down. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, we on the air. <laughs> You just just came at her. That's how you get in. You might want to look up there. You might want to look up there to see. That's us, right? Corey. Yeah, that's us. We doing. So, Bobby G is in the building. Uncle Bobby just gave me a physical copy of the Real Men Don't Play book, and it is signed to me. It lives. It lives. Yeah, it is alive. It is a thing. Right? So Bobby's in the building. Corey Holcomb has joined us. Lord, help him out. It's about to get nuts up in here. We're talking about manipulation. I've already took my stance. I think manipulation is just another facet of the human condition. It's par for the course. It's how we get down. It's how we interface. No good or bad. Everybody can misuse it. You know, my big mama used to say something like this. She said, everybody use each other. We just got to be careful not to misuse each other. Wow. Oh, That's I what Big that. Mama told me. See? So God bless Big Mama. Big Mama was cold. You know, mean, little Scorpio, <laughs> about five yeah. foot. Yeah, but, <laughs> geez, she was cold. Big Mama was kind. <laughs> she, woo, she was cold, but that's what she told me. That's what's the problem with the world. Big Mama ain't but about 38 years old now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so let's ask about intimate relationships, too. We already know the media is manipulating us. We already know that. We already know the My government heart, is yeah. manipulating us. We already know that. 
Let's go deeper into relationships, how we manipulate and misuse each other. And I don't think most people have the skill or the savvy to manipulate each other positively. Or otherwise, conflict wouldn't be so high in intimate relationships. Who disagrees with that? Well, I don't disagree. Somebody with that. call me right now. <laughs> I don't even. I'm throwing it to the panel. I don't even know if it's about that. I think it's when you first get a pheromone hit from someone that you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. Say more about a pheromone. Pheromone hit. Your pheromones is that invisible stuff that just went in your nose and hit your brain really fast and made you go zip. I like that one. Is there a, a you pretzel. using me pheromone? Like, this oh. shit stank. Pheromone? Yeah, actually there is. Actually there is. And even and there are periods of time when women are disgusted by their mates. So there's all kinds of stuff. But let's talk about, you get that pheromone hit. You can't get that person out of your mind. You are like a drug addict. You are going to do whatever it takes to get that person. So now you start out a manipulator. The question is... How quickly can you stop yourself and mm. say, wait just a minute, I anybody want to be me. A, anybody else hear the Prince song playing right now, Pheromone? <laughs> no, <laughs> only, <laughs> Jeff, only you. It's only you. <laughs> I, you know, she said, I, I don't think that there's any way that you cannot be manipulative. We were just talking about this in the break. Because, I mean, you can be manipulative in a negative way or in, or in just a way that I'm just trying to get what I want. But even when you stop, sometimes people even use being honest as a way to be manipulative. Give me an example of honesty. Give me that. Um, I think you've used this. I think, I think that probably... Maybe, go deeper. Let's go. Maybe that might be my strategy sometimes. Like, you I'm, know, I, hey, just sell us. Give us an example. Um, see, this is a I little, got a few. You got a few? Yeah. Go, give me no! no! Don't you let don't, Brandy don't, off the hook. hook. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. See, you manipulate right now. now. There you go with your manipulate bullshit. I'm manipulating now. I would like to hear Jeff's example. That's, no, Brandy, tell us. Um, I can't think of an example, but I can think of a way in, that I've been oh, manipulated. Damn. In a re, like in, in That's why people love you, Brandy. Women, I know. <laughs> Slippery. Uh, I, can give, I can give you one. Yeah, go for it. By bringing up the fact that you're going to be honest in order to manipulate someone, you brought up the fact that you're an honest person. You did that on the break. See? And so it's like saying, hello, by the way, I'm very honest, I'm even very though honest. I'm manipulated. Look That's a manipulation. Jeff and Corey, y'all right, be there. Ready. I manipulated my wife, straight up. How'd okay. you do that? Well, well she, she wasn't thinking about my monkey ass. When we first got together, I was in the friend zone. She told me that. And I said, okay, I'm going to start stacking up the mistakes that the friends made, and I'm going to climb the hell on out of here. And that's what I did. And I told her, I don't want to be your friend. My friends look like that. I don't, I don't need no, I don't have no fine friends. I don't have, I, my, I don't have no fine friends. I don't have no fine my friends. My friends look like that. These are my friends. I don't have many friends. These are my friends. I'm not hanging out with you for your stimulating chit-chat. I don't need that from you. Go ahead, Corey. Well, I want to say this. I think the reason that people manipulate in relationships is because most of us try to overachieve uh -oh. when, we, oh, when we here we go no, when, we, when we pick the person that we want to be with we always pick something that is not on our level um, the, the overachiever in you yeah, yeah. makes you pick somebody that the only way you can be around them is to manipulate them <laughs> If we were honest with ourselves, we would pick a partner. That's on our level. That's Give me an on example. Our level, and you both can be happy together. But most relationships are a situation where somebody is with somebody that they know that person can do better than me. So I have to manipulate the whole time I'm around them. I'm going to lie the whole time. You have to because oh. you're out of your league with that person. Oh, uh, Dr. G and Bobby, this is going to be great. So I need a fat, dishonest bra with the lazy eyes when I need to be going. Right. Be happy. Shooting too high, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. Uh, I think the brain bra is going to follow me on this thing. Uh, What's going on with manipulation? That was manipulation. That was NLP. You invited her to follow you. Don't think I don't know that shit. NLP, I, I hope she's tuning in. Uh, yeah, the Black Mastery. Uh, what's underneath manipulation is we're all drug addicts. And we're all drug wow. And here's where we're all drug addicts. Talk about the media. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is something going on in the world called adrenaline blindness. Hmm. And what that means is we will sell out happiness for excitement. Ooh. We will sell out... Uh, joy to have fun and what happens is you know the thrill of an adrenaline can rush can you speak to the difference between joy and fun because most people don't yeah i don't mm. okay there's uh 
joy is, uh, I guess joy is it, it, when, you, when you see your kid break through in some way, mm -hmm. you, you, you take a kind of joy in that, my God, he pushed himself to his limits, mm -hmm. there's a joy in that. Right. Uh, whereas fun and excitement is something that you know, it, it personally wows you, but getting back to the adrenaline thing, you know, the only thing bigger than an adrenaline rush is an adrenaline crash. Mm -hmm. and one of the reasons extreme athletes tend to all be ADD is they are generating adrenaline from excitement because they can't lose the high. But there's all kinds of other drugs. Uh, what uh, Lynette said is we're also f pheromone junkies, which means we're not geared to deal with the crash off these things. There's something called dopamine. That's a feeling of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we are all... Uh, kind of manipulated internally by our to get efforts, those triggers, right? Uh, to, yeah. to keep those levels high. Wow. And what we're not geared to do is uh, is to deal with the crash off them, and mm. that's what drives us. So when you get a when you have a taste of pheromones, when you have a taste of adrenaline, when you're on that crash, you'll do anything to get it back. So listen, when we come back from break, we've got another guest, Coach Byron Davis. He says manipulation is good. But before we get to him, we're going to go to Bobby, because Bobby is old school. I know Bobby knows some tricks about manipulation, some that have been played on him, and some he done played on others. And we, uh, real men don't play. We're going to see when we come back, i tell you that. So what, mornings? Manipulation is the topic. We'll be back. And now to an electronic immigrant who ought to be illegal, but apparently isn't. You can find him doing his stuff at 3 a.m., on Channel 9. God has used Reverend Peter Popoff throughout his entire life and ministry to bring miraculous deliverance to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. It's not clear, and the Nine Network wouldn't tell us, whether Peter Popoff is paying to have his half-hour message aired. But whether he is or he isn't, it's clearly an exercise in spruiking a product. Miracle Spring Water. We're going to share the miracle spring water with you. And I'm going to tell you how a Russian pastor found the miracle spring water, not on his own, but through divine leading and direction. And God miraculously spared, prospered, delivered him. And God wants to do the same for you as you use the miracle spring water. And as you can see, this miracle water is absolutely free which is clever of the Reverend Popoff, because if he was selling you the miracle water, which he says has the power to transform your life, he'd be engaging in trade or commerce. And under the Trade Practices Act, a person or corporation must not, in trade or commerce, engage in conduct that is liable to mislead the public about the nature of any services. Jeez. Wow. You mean even Jesus is manipulating us? Oh, yeah. Every month they got someone there. Oh. Who will take no, it's there. someone named yeah, Papa. Go pussy girl. Yeah. What? <laughs> Don't get this lawsuit. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know that shit? The vaginal mess shit? Yeah. The girls got destroyed? <laughs> the cycle. There's a cycle. What? There's a cycle. Everything you buy that you swallow is going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put that shit in your mouth, that's your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the shit comes out. The shit comes out. Everybody Ooh, buys it. Boy. Six months later, uh, all the lawyers yeah. are suing the people who made the shit. If you were on testosterone one, therapy yeah. right. and your left nut has fallen out of its sack, yeah. Yeah. You see, right? <laughs> if your balls now have eyes, <laughs> right. if, you're if your balls can see what you're saying, <laughs> you belong on YouTube. You'll get a lot of hits, Bobby. Yes. Talk to us about your your experience with manipulators uh, really quickly, and then we're going to go to our, our phone All right, I'll be real quick. Um, for many years, I, I thought I was manipulating, but I was being played. And then I said, you know what, let me just try this honesty thing. And what happened was when I started being honest, I had to be honest with myself. I said, if I want it, I'm going to ask for it. And if I, if I get it, I deserve it. So if I see a, a beautiful young lady like her, uh, I'm out of my league. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do. Take a good hard swing. Yeah, and Might I miss it by a foot. So what no, I, 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 I want what I asked for. Right. By name. Right. You know. What is that? Can I have some? And yeah. She, so, she, she looked at me too long. You know what? They're calling. They're calling you know, call manipulation. Divine that ain't manipulation. Yeah. That's me being honest with myself. You know, that which you seek is also seeking you. Uh oh. And I, I, I all these like other phrases. 
if there's a cure for it, I don't want it. I really wow. feel like if there's a woman it's a who doesn't excel in college, she should be trained to she should be trained to sell a vagina. And I, that what? Makes, Go deeper. If you, don't excel, <laughs> if you don't excel in college, the reason I say college because a lot of times when you excel, <laughs> well, when you excel in college. They can find a place for you in the world. If you excel in college, they can justify putting you at a job that makes a decent amount of money. But if you can't excel in college, your pussy is your only outlet from poverty. And I feel like we should teach women who don't have it upstairs to hustle it downstairs. I'm just being honest. I, that's not, I'm not trying to be mean. It was solve G, a lot of. Don't have to manipulate. Right. So just G, go to guns. Just go to guns. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Doctor G has to bring us back with some whiteness. Uh, so can you purify the moment, please, with some of the whiteness? Please help us. Oh, I want to address it no, too. Yeah, let her address it because I'm just thinking below the waist here. Go on. <laughs> Jesus. I, no, actually, I'm going to be go. perfectly honest with you that I did that job. Which one? Uh, the below the waist. And what? Yeah, absolutely. What? Exactly. What job did you do? Was I did. I, I was selling it out there when I was raising my kids. I didn't have any any other way of, of taking care of them, and I had a six month stint of that, and I actually wrote a book about it. Wow. Um, and I and it was uh, it was a lifesaver. So you're right.